From the darkest corners of Tumblr comes a podcast where we take two of your favorite fictional characters, get them together, and ask, do we ship it? Hey guys, welcome back to Ships in the Night. I'm Zach Wilson. Somewhere out in that ether is Greg Goodness. It it really is somewhere at this point. Like, you know how uh, time has lost all meaning and no one knows like what quite day of the week it is. Uh, I have now progressed to a a space time continuum dislodging in my brain where I no longer know where I am in physical space. I I could be floating out in the ether. I I may have entered a fifth dimension. I I pretty much exist only as an online entity at this point. Well, well, we're just voices. We're voices uh, (laughs) uh, uploaded to the Apple cloud. And that's pretty much all we we are these days. We're not (laughs) we're not functioning human beings. We're just a piece of Apple's machinery. That's all that we have ever been. That's the only proof that we have walked this earth is this horrifying podcast. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) And my life flashes before me. But here's the good news, Greg. We have other bodiless spirits that we can welcome to the show in this bot in this like ethereal plane of of nonsense that we call ships in the night. Let's welcome to the show writer and tech wizard. It's Dave Chacho. Hi, Dave. Thanks how for does having it feel me. to be? How does it feel to be ensnared in our digicube uh, of? <laughs> Of non-reality. It feels great. In, in fact, uh, uh, earlier this month, I went ahead and, and uploaded my entire brain into the internet and just <laughs> di- did away with the the my corporeal body forever. I'm done oh with God. it. Yeah, I, I now I'm basically an app. I run on a, a phone <laughs> or or a, a lap book, prefer, preferably Mac, MacBook or something of that. That you know something in the newer uh, uh, a laptop. In, and uh, and and it's nice. Uh, it's just uh, sort of uh, warm and pleasant here, living in, in digital space. Apps never sweat. That's the best thing. It's <laughs> like you never have to download <laughs> Tinder and put on deodorant to go outside. Like it's just it, it just is as it is. It's perfect. I don't know, man. Have you been on Hinge? That thing's all sweaty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, certain apps are dirtier than others, and we're cluttering up the app store with our filth. All right. Yeah. Well, our filth aside, it's time for some, uh, well, a different kind of filth, actually, now that I say it out loud. Uh, I think we should get into our shipping for the day. What do you guys say? Should we kick it off with the first ship? I'm ready. Hit me with it. Uh, this one, we, so speaking of being ethereal, this ship is perfectly suited because we're talking about, from Watchmen, Dr. Manhattan, and from Bruce Almighty... The Almighty himself, it's God, as portrayed by Morgan Freeman. We've got two godlike figures, God and Dr. Manhattan. First reactions, what do you guys think? Consequences for the entire universe, I feel like, uh, are going to come out of this. When people say, like, when they have really good sex, they're like, man, I'm seeing stars after that. When these two fuck, they are creating stars as a byproduct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was definitely my first instinct, is... You know, there's that old sort of juvenile theological question of uh, is there a boulder that God could create that is so large even he could not hold it? Like, just the sexual ramifications of that question uh, apply to two (laughs) separate individuals. Are you asking uh, if there if God can create a dick so big that he himself cannot suck it? Okay. (laughs) Zach, we are not even five minutes into the podcast, my dude. You have got to bring it in for a smoother landing than that. Disagree. Hard disagree. But I mean, yeah, like what uh, uh, Dr. Manhattan can create, can can basically shape his dick any size or, or shape that he likes. And and I assume God can take it. Um <laughs> But maybe I mean maybe this is this is like a, a little like game that they they like to play. Does this start as a philos? So going to the meet cute. Does this start as a philosophical conversation? Well, I mean it's interesting because they they both uh, uh, like Greg goodness live outside of time, right? Uh, they, they can they they experience all time at the same time. So I I, I assume before they 
hook up. They are already uh, hooking up. <laughs> Right now, they somewhere they're hooking have, up. They always have simul- been. Yeah, simultaneously have and have not been having sex. They are long. always <laughs> fucking and have always been fucking. And uh, uh, leading up to it, uh, they they retain the memory of their future fucking uh, before they even meet. I, I could kind of see this as a... I mean, yes, we're diving really quickly into the sort of space-time continuum logistics of all of this. These are important questions, Greg. For the purposes of our very simple monkey-brained 2D timeline, like, I think that maybe that is actually a point of contention for them, of, like, Dr. Manhattan is chilling on Mars and, like, thinking that he is so all-powerful and everything, and who should pop up but Morgan Freeman, right? And it's like, oh, I see that you're pondering the philosophical questions of our time. Well, let me uh, hit you with one further. And it's like already right off the bat, it's this sort of like, mm, I'm more godlike than you, Dr. Manhattan. And it, it, subsequently, Dr. Manhattan trying to show him up. Am I way off in my assessment here? <laughs> that Dr. Manhattan, it be- <laughs> that it's a dick measuring contest of the... Uh- <laughs> Of the omnipresent? Yeah, it Let's, starts as a philosophical dick measuring contest and then gets into a very literal dick measuring <laughs> contest. Well, they both uh, have created life, um, uh, although Dr. Manhattan's life wasn't quite uh, uh, up to human uh, snuff from the TV show anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and But we've also learned uh, from the TV show that Dr. Manhattan is not... Um, uh, omnipowerful uh, uh, and can be mm, perhaps beaten. I don't want to give away too much of what happens, but uh, uh, is is he not can uh, be the, eternal. There is a, a way to stop him. Yeah, there. Look, there's a way to kill God. Just like uh, we're able to kill Doctor Manhattan. Uh, TikToking teens who like to, <laughs> uh, you know, make out with each other. They are also killing God. If I am um, to believe my extremely a uh, conservative uncle in Florida. So <laughs> <laughs> also, yeah, like Nietzsche uh, killed God. You know, back a uh, hundred years ago. So. Um, <laughs> I do like I Morgan Freeman is like, I've suffered many deaths. Voiced <laughs> by Frederick Nietzsche also, and now the TikTokers. No, notably, Dr. Manhattan doesn't believe in God, uh, presumably up until their meeting, even though he, he's, he's uh, 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 universally aware that they're going to one day meet. <laughs> <laughs> so they're just on Mars and Dr. Man's like, mm, well, uh, it's it's really interesting that you're here. Too bad that you don't exist. <laughs> well, here's a question. So it, but if there is a God it, like beyond Dr. Manhattan in his universe, does he once he is dead, does does he then now go to like the next plane and that's where he meets God? Or do they meet while he's full in full power? Do do dead gods go to heaven? <laughs> <laughs> Could God create a heaven so good that when he is killed, he himself it's, goes? He himself to goes it. to heaven. Oh my god! It becomes a paradox of like, did Doctor Manhattan accidentally dream up an actual god, or did God create Doctor Manhattan in the first place? And it's just an Ouroboros of <laughs> these two 69ing. If, um, if God dies and goes to heaven, does he sit at his own right hand? <laughs> Morgan Freeman is like, I do believe that we've created the theological inception, <laughs> Dr. Manhattan. I am here to sit next to you, who is also <laughs> myself. But so here's here's the, th- here's the thing, though. Once these two do meet it, in heaven, in space on mars wherever it is do these two fit together like long term in terms of just their personalities because they definitely have stuff to talk about because i think morgan freeman god he he wants somebody to who can understand what 
he's gone through as the omnipresent God. That's why he gives Bruce all of those this power. Cause he's like, somebody needs to understand, but here he gets well, a guy. Jim Carrey learned very few of the lessons I wanted to teach him. <laughs> But here he gets a guy who understands what it's like to be all powerful and can actually have a conversation with him about it. Or but, or do they have nothing to talk about because they both know everything? They're like an old couple <laughs> sitting at, at a Shoney's at four in the afternoon, just not talking to each other. <laughs> Morgan every Freeman day. is like, can you believe I gave Jim Carrey all of my powers and he just used it to lasso the moon so he could fuck? And Dr. Manhattan is like, yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can believe it. And I am aware of it. And no further discussion is necessary. I have How can both you be heard this story a thousand times and created it myself. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> They've already, um, they, but they, as they meet, they have already heard all of their stories. <laughs> right. I've already heard the punchlines to all of your favorite jokes, so don't even try it on me. I, I'm aware of all your lines to try to get me into bed. And is I also like, know which ones work or don't. This is some weird reverse eternal sunshine of the spotless mind where <laughs> as soon as they come into each other's vision, they're like, mm, this ends badly. <laughs> <laughs> and they just they meet uh, uh immediately uh, uh, share a knowing glance and walk away like and that's it like all of the knowledge of the universe is transmitted in that one glance and then it's over <laughs> i think that is a really interesting idea for a relationship because in all of the hundred or so episodes that we've done so far i don't think we've ever had the instantaneous relationship, right? Like the relationship that occurs faster than the speed of light. And yet also, <laughs> yeah, this is them. But getting also into lasts a millennia. Ship. Right. <laughs> it's as Dave said, it's them getting into a rocket ship going at the speed of light. And they are uh, by the end of a blink of an eye, they return to earth in a shakies at 4 p.m. <laughs> like for the early bird special. They already know each other through and through. Yeah. Well, maybe it could be. Well, here's what I what I worry about. And, and uh, according to my Catholic upbringing, God created humans because he was lonely and wanted companionship. Uh, so if he if he does become comfortable in a relationship then we're just out are, are we are, are, we're like the the old the ex right then he just forgets about <laughs> us fuck fuck you guys you you, well, you disappointed me on all levels interesting but dr manhattan does seem to care about humanity at least to a certain extent right so does that become a rift mm -hmm. i don't know if he does he leaves he leaves to go create life and then he comes back to uh uh, have sex with Eve. Yeah, Regina, <laughs> Regina, King, Regina King. Oh, yeah. from from the TV show. I love how much we're just like replacing character names with actors. <laughs> yeah, are, are we talking about uh, is Doctor Manhattan uh, Billy Crudup or Yaha Abdul uh, Mateen or whatever? Oh, and is it, is God Old Testament God or New Testament God? Because they have yeah. very different temperaments, my friend. Also, God well, is actually, Morgan Freeman, Greg, we've established this. There's no Old Testament, <laughs> New Testament. It's just Morgan Freeman. Do you mean uh, Dr. Is he Bruce or Evan Almighty, Morgan Freeman? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Manhattan is John Osterman, who is a, a Jewish uh, uh, em emigrant from Europe to the U.S. So it would definitely be out a, a, an angry old Testament God. I, I think. Okay. So if anything, there, there being I, no, no new Testament in the Jewish faith, it was what I'm saying. If anything, then I think there's probably, if Dr. Manhattan does care about humanity, that's the rift because God is like, listen, I am over these people. I gave them <laughs> everything that I could. And then I went to Jim Carrey and I tried to do it on a more personal level. And still it was only a middling box office success. <laughs> like, 
I'm done with these people. And Dr. Manhattan does want to save them, right? I, I think a lot of the Watchmen series and a lot of the novel uh, uh, presents Dr. Manhattan as not really caring too much about humanity. He doesn't believe in per, like protecting us from ourselves necessarily. Yeah. I am not going to get into this discussion because uh, if I learned anything from my early days as a, a college uh, person, it's that uh, discussions about the philosophical ramifications of Watchmen do not end well. Uh, they ruin friendship and forever stain uh, any sort of future relationship that you try to have. It's true. If anyone uh, that, that I was dating or friends with uh, liked the Watchmen movie, I would I'd be done with them. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's fair, though. I think that's pretty reasonable <laughs> as a as a choice. Uh, but OK, so back to back to the back to the fanfic that we're creating here. Uh, these two have an instantaneous and oh, as and simultaneously millennia long relationship. Does it continue into infinity or does, does it just kind of like do its thing? Like, what does this relationship look like to these two? I really like the idea of them now we're getting into much more like a sliding doors, uh, romantic comedy kind of universe, but it, it's literally God as Morgan Freeman and Dr. Manhattan walking down a street in opposite directions. And like at the very exact moment of them passing in opposite directions within that fraction of a 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 second, they managed to have a relationship that goes beyond our comprehension, both <laughs> sexually, emotionally, and everything in between. And we can't even begin to fathom the, the deepness of the connection that these two form in, in a fraction of a second. Their love is dark matter in that we can <laughs> like we are still trying to perceive its fragments within the universe. We can I, I think you should write that, that song. Your love is dark matter. <laughs> <laughs> we can detect its existence from the lack of love around it. <laughs> <laughs> but we cannot prove that it that the love itself exists. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say that they have a, a a very strong and emotional and uh, uh, and and satisfying relationship that doesn't last forever. Uh, partly because uh, I, I believe I, I'm going to say it's canon from the TV show. Uh, you should watch it if you haven't watched it yet. Stop the podcast. Go watch all ten episodes and come back. Okay, now that you're back. Um, <laughs> Dr. Manhattan dies in 2019. I'm going to say that's canon. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I would say that if, if they, if they meet cute before that, they have a very strong and uh, successful relationship, but it's not, uh, eternal. I think that's fair. That's a good story right there. Well, Bruce almighty came out in what early 2000s. So like, you know, it's, uh, that leaves him some time. That's good. Yeah, It was somewhere in there. It was that everyone mm -hmm. thought he was on Mars, but he was uh, off in, I don't know where the it, fuck Bruce almighty he, takes he was, place, but he was off sucking God's dick. <laughs> <laughs> or I mean, I know, I know, uh, <laughs> Morgan Freeman is is a male human, but do you think he that as God he has a vagina? I think he, he can if he wants to. Yeah. If he wants to, yeah, okay. I, I like Greg's better. He both does and does not. He does it. He he both has a dick and a vagina, both and neither. Yeah, exactly. He is uh, he is both all and nothing. The alpha and the omega, the penis <laughs> and the vagina. Oh, that's what that means. <laughs> <laughs> but so here's the question that we got to ask ourselves at this point. Like, so we, we th this relationship has has like birthed the the universe. It's it, it's been instantaneous. It's been it's been forever. Uh, do we ship it? I'm gonna go ahead and say yes mostly because we just haven't had any sort of relationship like this on the podcast before. And I think uh, variety is the spice of life. You need a relationship that both does and does not exist at the same time. 
just to mix it up. So I'm for it. Yes. Yeah. Dave, I ship what it. do you think? I like it. Um, yeah. The clash of the Titans, the gods, uh, the gods get together. Uh, like yeah, I said, philosophers I it... will spend ages just trying to debate the the positivity or negativity of the relationship, but we can say for sure. I think we should. Yeah, I think it doesn't last forever, but it also does last forever because it's forever. At that point of <laughs> that, that one instant that they they're together is forever. <laughs> uh, uh, beautiful. Uh, and almost a, that 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 fanfic was almost a religious experience, you could say. Uh, all right. We're going to take a quick break while I get punished for, uh, for making those puns. Uh, and we will be right back. And we're back with our second ship. And this one, let's just, we went, we went from the biggest and now we're going back to the small screen because we're talking about from space ghost coast to coast. Space Ghost. And from Saturday Night Live, The Church Lady. Two talk <laughs> show hosts, one ship. What do you guys think? Uh, definitely competing for airtime. Uh, it's going to be tough. <laughs> and uh, we had talked about theology a lot in our previous ship. But man, I think that there's going to be. I'm not sure how the church lady feels about a space ghost. <laughs> if she believes in his existence. Uh, going back to the God talk a little bit, that, like the church lady presumably loves God and God not being human and not being from Earth is kind of a ghost from up space, wouldn't you say? Hmm. So okay. this might be a familiar territory for her. I can is also space see Space Ghost, ghost saying that <laughs> to church lady. <laughs> like, well, what do you think about it? <laughs> I am a god. <laughs> I mean, that's the question. Is Space Ghost the Holy Ghost? <laughs> no one's successfully explained to me what the Holy Ghost is to this point, because there's two other gods or something. I don't know. I'm Jewish. Help me out here. Uh, but let's talk about this. Let's talk about this fanfic instead. You see, it's like uh, a tri trinity, uh, tri trinity. It's like a <laughs> shamrock. It's got like three leaves, but it's all one shamrock. I don't know. I, I didn't pay that much attention in Catholic school. <laughs> then what is the stem? Uh, uh, all right so space ghost uh, and the church lady uh do they meet at like an awards show what do you guys think what's the meet cute here zach i i would defer to you what you think would be the appropriate meet cute for these two i think these two meet at some uh award show that we can make up so that we don't get sued uh, that is exclusively for uh, niche audience talk shows. <laughs> and they're both nominated for best host. The, 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 peop, the People's Choice Awards. Is, so, uh, so we don't get sued by the People's Choice Awards. <laughs> the People's Decision Awards. The People's Decision. <laughs> <laughs> so these two are going for, uh, they're, they're both nominated yeah, for best we're host. We're nominated for a pedo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's called that. People's oh, they, decision. I'm, I'm glad Zorak finally showed up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh the Christ. Um so these two so are do these two start as like bitter enemies or do they have like a friendly dynamic? What do you think? I mean, the space ghost, I think, would be welcoming enough in the sense that he's sort of vaguely welcoming to all of his guests. He at least doesn't immediately treat them as hostile most of the time. I, I have yeah. to imagine, though, that the church lady is going to be awfully suspicious of this man, if nothing else, because, like, his pants are way too tight for a God-fearing <laughs> woman. You know what I mean? <laughs> He is yeah. poured into that superhero outfit. So I would imagine she would have some uh, catty, stinging remarks to make about his uh, spandex. He like, he starts explaining, well, this is how I fly using this belt. And these these uh, are my things. And she isn't. Well, isn't that special? Uh, oh. 
who decided who, who designed that bulge in your pants? Let me see. I yeah, I think she's definitely going to be standoffish. At least she's going to have to be convinced. But Space Ghost is a pretty uh, charming fella. I, I bet he could he could court her a little bit and maybe uh, change her mind. Oh, is this like at the at the? Um, let's see. It wouldn't be. It would be the mayor's ball after the award show. Because uh, uh, we can't say governor's ball. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe I, like, I, don't know if that, I don't know if that joke tracks. Uh, what, but- what if Space Coast was invited to the SNL after party? So it's like a New York City loft at, at two in the morning. Oh, I see. So Okay. So the, uh, all these these bizarre SNL characters are there. Uh, a couple of them, <laughs> Space Ghost connects to. He's like, "Oh, Coneheads, we can have a conversation." Yeah. He's talking uh, with, with Ed Grimley and uh, the cheerleaders, <laughs> and, <laughs> and Space Ghost uh, walks up. Well, who's before we get to the to the after party? Who won the award, or did they both lose? They both definitely lost. It went yeah. to like. Uh, Brian Cold. Meeples hanging with peoples, sort of like <laughs> vaguely public access, like regional uh, chronicle esque news magazine program. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yep. so they they start they neither one of them likes the other one at first. Like they 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 had a bad interaction at the award show, but they're at the same party, and I totally see this that they're just like hanging out by the drinks and one of those says something smart snarky about whatever person greg just said because i already forgot it um and they commiserate uh, over their 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 shared uh loss and and their uh uh, uh frustration with the get the the mayor's ball what is it <laughs> <laughs> the mayor's ball yes that's that's the award show that you have after that's the that's the party that you have after the the glemmies um. <laughs> yeah like space ghost is i think at this point yeah had a few too many and he's trying to convince her like i should have won that award i'm a great host look you believe in god what's that about how's that for a question gotcha like it's <laughs> instantly he is trying to lay on the charm and i would imagine that then yeah it, i think that church lady having that format spun around on her and finally have someone asking her the questions and asking about her interests and what she believes in, even if it is in that very sort of half-hearted space ghost manner, I think she would be into that. That's a, a level of attention that not a lot of people pay her. Mm-hmm. And maybe after like, uh, she has a, a few like roses in her and, you know, it's been a disappointing day and, and she just wants to let loose a little. She might be uh, she might be up for a little, you know, snogging behind the the. Uh, <laughs> she has a few too many sacramental lines. Organ, and then I can show you the thing I play on. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've got a little too much of the blood of Christ in me. I don't know what accent that is because it's definitely not church lady. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> Uh, well, okay. So these two, so it, there's the drunken hookup in the loft at, at the SNL, uh, Glemmy's after party, uh, for the, the Bobby people's Moynihan decision awards. Staring the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's a loft. So it's an open format thing. They like disappear into the upstairs, but Bobby Moynihan was already there. He just didn't leave. Uh, <laughs> Bobby Moynihan never leaves. <laughs> and everyone's a little secondhand high from Pete Davidson just walking just walking past them. <laughs> so these two just I think they just are going at it in the loft, like right there, the upstairs of this loft. Mm -hmm. My only so I I think we can uh like imagine it i don't need to i don't need the details of what happens when space ghost uh journeys into the unknown of church lady i'm more interested in what happens the next morning oh boy yeah oh the fallout from that is gonna be swift and mighty uh <laughs> church? Swift and mighty. 
church lady is a god fearing woman. So, like, I would imagine that, yeah, Space Ghost wakes up super hungover. Uh, Pete but Davis also, like, super up. proud that he. Yeah, that he, I finally got laid. Made out with a woman, exactly. <laughs> and then church lady is like, well, since you've stuck your, your tongue in my holy mouth cave, then we need to get married. Like she just, mm. I, I think space ghost wakes up hung over and sees church lady in a wedding dress. Like it's time. Yeah, She's, <laughs> you know? she's probably going to immediately get clingy and he's going to be like, Oh, look at the time. Uh, geez. Looks like, I think I have, uh, somewhere to be. I, uh, Nonsense, Zor- Bill Hader, get over here. Zorak, You're the officiant don't, of something. Don't we have lunch plans? No, we haven't. <laughs> We've never hung out in, our, in the entire time you've known me. Uh, it's just you want to be my they, best man. <laughs> he's trying to get away. Like, I look, I've got, uh, I've got brunch plans that I've got to get to. You know, uh, uh. uh Moon brunch. It takes extra long, and I need to get there very soon. I'm, I'll, I'll definitely call or text. You have I'll, a two-way communicator, yes? That sounds <laughs> like the words of Satan. Yeah. She starts calling she, him Satan a bunch of times, and he's just like trying to make an exit. Yeah, she is just definitely going to pursue him. This becomes Church Lady is now a recurring character on Space Ghost Coast to Coast at this point <laughs> because she is so dedicated to the idea that like, well, you gave me a peck on the cheek once drunkenly <laughs> in front of, uh, you know, special guest Lenny Kravitz. And now we are married and she is in the meteor is that what they film on dave well there's there's a window where you can see out of space so uh i i, I imagine that that she's just out there in a spacesuit, just knocking on the window just banging let me in let me Constantly. in yeah he's trying <laughs> to interview willie nelson and she's like you haven't performed your husbandly duties like <laughs> put a baby in me so we may propagate in the name of the lord you owe sorry, me a ghost her, baby willie. <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> oh man well so i mean what happens from there like does this end with with them with her like wearing him down to the point where they get married or does does or space ghost space have rest- to use some of the lasers that he's got order. on that suit <laughs> it's a restraining order a space restraining order might be <laughs> called for but that's the thing she isn't gonna uh, heed that uh, space restraining order because that wasn't signed off on by god the only word in law she pays attention to is that of the bible so I, I think you're in a situation where this never ends right uh, uh, space ghost is married in the eyes of church lady not in his own eyes and just so for the rest of eternity hurtling <laughs> throughout space is going to be this nagging hen of a not quite wife <laughs> banging at his windows. Like, Nope, I'm here with you for all of eternity. Oh, yeah. That was, that was a, <laughs> Sorry. That was, I sort of closed the book. That was on a that big one. mistake that, that he's going to regret that hookup for the rest of his space days. Could, would it, would it help at all if he tried to sick Zorak on her? Well, I, he, I am an evil villain. I think Zorak likes her. <laughs> like she's catty and mean. <laughs> she can keep up with my zingers. <laughs> what about Brack? Maybe Brack and her would just get along. <laughs> Famously, sure, yeah. Like <laughs> he's a dumb idiot. Uh, church going types love dumb idiots. So you like to talk about God? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty um, cool. <laughs> that, that might be the, that. That might be that. Like he he could he could uh, uh, sort of. Uh, foist her off space ghost is like uh i'm not interested in this woman but i i'll introduce her to to brack and maybe the two of them will hook up and then it'll take off the uh, uh, uh pressure on me 
but they just become like best friends. And so like all of a sudden church lady is hanging out with all of uh, all of Space Coast's friends. He's like she's she's getting along with Zorak and Brack and he, she, he's just like, what's happening to my show? <laughs> and then they have to I've, see each other awkwardly all the time at parties. <laughs> I've adopted Brack. He's our son. <laughs> Hello, father. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, this just went from bad to worse. <laughs> and this is what led to the cancellation of Space Ghost, coast to coast. Yeah, he was a family man. Oh, he has man. to raise his son now. Both of their talk shows are going to suffer for this relationship. <laughs> Oh man! Well, I guess like we got to ask that question: Do we ship it? I yeah. don't think so. Oh I, yeah, really? Greg I, does. Yeah, I can see that. I want a uh, annoying Henish wife, and I'm sure like that's not an okay thing to say anymore. But I want that character in space goes coast to coast i want her banging at the windows <laughs> and reminding space ghost that like it's his turn to clean out the space gutters we don't have space gutters <laughs> i installed uh, them <laughs> I- i'm gonna i'm gonna disagree i don't want this for either one of them both of them had fun talk shows while they were on the air and this is gonna ruin both of them i don't ship it yeah i don't ship it either i i think uh it- it's gonna end up being toxic uh they were just both uh, horny and and a little drunk and a little high and they hooked up out of desperation and sadness from losing the glemmy uh (laughs) the the pedos or the glemmies i don't don't know it's like the academy award and the oscars it has a lot of names i think they both end up worse worse for it i don't ship it Oh, well, there you have it, guys. We do not, with, two to, with a two to one vote, we do not ship the church lady and space ghost. Sorry, Greg. Uh, uh, right. We're going to. In my mind, they're together forever. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, together for such a short amount of time. We're going to take a quick break, and then we will be right back with our matchmaker segment. And we're back for our matchmaker segment. Before we dive into that, just a quick reminder, guys, if you're enjoying the show, make sure that you share it with your friends, like it, give it a, a follow, a subscribe, whatever pla- the, 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 the way that your platform has chosen to distinguish the fact that you can digitally say you like the podcast and want to hear more of it. Uh, thank you so much for listening. And we'll continue to get weird. Uh, speaking of weird, we have opened the doors on our matchmaking service. And Dave, we hear that you have a friend that you need us to find love for. So please tell us about them. Okay. Um, the uh, friend that I'm going to present to you is a, uh, a vampire, but uh, a, a day walking vampire. So they uh, uh, are not restricted to uh, night only. And a special kind of vampire called an energy vampire. And uh, this is my friend Colin Robinson from the TV show, What We Do in the Shadows. Uh, He's an energy vampire, which means that he feeds uh, not on food, but on uh, draining the energy of the humans around him. Or even uh, he can feed off other vampires by basically being... Uh, 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 almost fatally boring. <laughs> it's a uh, good choice. It's a real challenge for us to find someone to set him up with. But I think yeah. we have a couple of ideas. Uh, Zach, do you want to cue me up here? Yeah, Greg, take it away. So the important thing to remember about Colin Robinson is that, you know, he may be a bore, but he's also a pretty knowledgeable guy. He has a lot of factoids swimming around in that head of his. You can talk about bridges for great legs, you know, Renaissance art, uh, the differences between uh, a, an abatement and abutment, you know, that sort of thing. I think he needs someone that can keep up with him intellectually. And that's why I want to pair him up with Mr. Lauren Sachs, a.k.a. 
Ben Stein from Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the <laughs> economics teacher. Here's a guy who can keep up with him intellectually, but knows what it's like to sap the life out of unsuspecting humans, specifically students in his case. And I think this may be an interesting point where, uh, you know, he can even introduce him to that sort of uh, that sort of world of boring kids. Wow. Yeah, wow. Right. That's that is that is a choice. That's a surprising choice. Uh, well, I think I have I have another another option that I want to throw out there while we're while we're suggesting people. Because I think what Colin Robinson needs really is he needs somebody who can also just be a bottomless food source for him. That's why I want to set him up with someone with so much energy, you cannot believe that it is just not stopping. And that's why I'm looking at Ace Ventura. Because when you look at Ace Ventura, you look at a man and you're just like, how is that person still bouncing around? There is no way a human being has that much energy and is so the opposite of bored that I think that Craig Robinson could just feed on Ace Ventura's energy for hours. But what does Ace get out of this, I hear you ask? Yes, I heard you in the back. Calm down. Ace Ventura needs to calm down. He needs to support his business. And I think he's going to level off a little bit with Colin Round. These two are going to balance each other out and just live a happy life together. Hmm. Wow. That is not the direction I was expecting you to take. <laughs> I have to commend you. Um, you know, even though we're sworn enemies on the field of battle, that is love. Uh, interesting, interesting tactical maneuver, sir. <laughs> well, Dave, do you have any questions for us? Uh, whether you want to, uh, whether you're trying to hook up Colin with Ben Stein or with Ace Ventura, uh, please, before we move to the rebuttal round. Now, uh, Ben Stein was a, a writer for Nixon, although I guess the teacher uh, what's the teacher's name? I suppose he wasn't. Uh... I had to look it up. His name is Mr. Lauren Sachs uh, at Ferris Bueller's high school. So he's he's presumably pretty close to actually actual Ben Stein. <laughs> I think he is Ben Stein. I think he's basically uh, Ben yeah. Stein. We exactly. could say that, that he was, if if not a, a Nixon speechwriter, a, a Nixon supporter. Um so I, I, I wonder, uh, Greg, if there's any political uh, uh, consequences you think might be positive okay. or negative. That's fair. That. Do you have any questions for Zach? Definitely going to be a lot of uh, animals. He's a pet detective, after all. <laughs> so they're going to have a lot of pets. Um, do we know if Colin Robinson is, is, uh, okay with, uh, living with a partner with pets? Okay. Surprisingly grounded question for <laughs> a show about hooking up a pet detective with an energy vampire. Okay, cool, cool. All right. Well, Greg, you want to kick us off with rebuttal round? Yeah, sure thing. Go for it. Okay, so the whole Republican thing, I think that works out very well for Colin Robinson. Have you ever been to an RNC rally, good sir? I mean, there are a lot of people that deserve to maybe have the energy sucked out of them. But more to the point, I just want to use this to dunk on Zach, because uh, <laughs> if Ace Ventura doesn't have the energy to talk out of his ass, how is he going to find the Miami Dolphins mascot? You have created a purely parasitic relationship, which after years of therapy, I can finally realize is not okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. Colin Robinson, I think he, he, he does like animals. I mean, he lives with people that can turn into bats. He has to be at least kind of okay with living with animals. He's had to deal with enough guano that he and Ace Ventura can at least bond over a hatred of bats and guano at this point. <laughs> Let's just, but I, but that's the thing. I think Ace Ventura, he could, he'll have a much more successful career once he just comes down a notch. I mean, let's take a, let's look at it. 
that animated series did not do well. He needs Ooh. somebody to bring him down. That animated series failed because they would not pay Jim Carrey to do the actual voices. <laughs> that is behind the scenes and it is absolutely not canon, Greg. <laughs> well, Dave, we've presented you with two options for your friend Colin Robinson, the energy vampire. Ben Stein, because we can't remember the character from The Breakfast Club's name and ace ventura who do you want to set colin up on a date with wow okay a lot to unpack here um i like the ben stein suggestion it seems like they might be well uh suited to each other there's both uh, i mean basically ben stein is sort of an energy vampire at least the economics teacher he plays definitely seems to be although in the show and what we do in the shadows, we have seen that Colin has dated uh, at least one other energy vampire, and it did not turn out well because they were feeding off of each other a lot, um, which made them both uh, sort of lesser. Ace Ventura is interesting because I got to say, I think Jim Carrey's later work is better when he's a little more subdued. So I think that uh, uh, me, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think when, when he uh, uh, what was that show Com uh, comedian? Uh, no, uh, uh, kidding, kidding. I think he's he's better in that than than he was when he was in the mask, you know. So I think taking Ace Ventura down a notch might actually improve his uh, his career and social 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 standing and and. Uh, and just uh, a personality in general. I am going to choose Ace Ventura and Colin uh, Robinson because I think that they <laughs> uh, uh, that, that they they both improve each other. Ooh, man, Who would have Dave. thought that you'd ever see a ship of Colin Robinson, the Energy Vampire, and Ace Ventura? Only Dave, we have fundamentally different views of what constitutes peak Jim Carrey. <laughs> <laughs> if only I had known. Really? You're going to go with the mask Jim Carrey as his, his, his peak? The apex. Yes. It, I mean, you're like, going to tell me you take fucking the majestic Jim Carrey over the mask. Fuck you, Dave. Seriously. Maybe I would, majestic I would take is middle show. Jim Carrey, Greg. I would take Truman Show Jim Carrey over uh, the mask Jim Carrey uh, or even cable guy Jim Carrey most uh, any day of the week. We don't talk about cable guy around here. <laughs> <laughs> Not until the audience suggests someone for us to ship with the cable guy. Please don't. <laughs> Please do. Uh, Dave, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, people want to keep up with you. I know you're doing a bunch of stuff these days online. Uh, please uh, plug away. Tell tell people what they can find you on. Uh, okay, I write for some shows. Uh, uh, one of them's called Setflix. It's like a movie pitch game show with comedian guests. Um, one of them is uh, a show I write for is called uh, The Happy Sappy Grown Up Hour, hosted by Nikki Urban. It's like a uh, it's like Sesame Street for adults. We we do stories about sex, drugs, and rock and roll, but with puppets and animation and such. Um, both of those can be found online. And I host a new show on Twitch called Jack In, um, which is a, uh, an animated... It's a show with with uh, uh, comedy guests and, and animated hosts, and the the hosts are done in real time animation and interact with the host the guests in real time, very much like Space Ghost. Uh, the guests come on a TV as themselves, or, or uh, and uh, uh, the hosts, uh, me and my sidekick, are both animated in real time. It's really fun, and that can be found on Twitch TV slash Jack In Show. Awesome. It, well, I uh, guess uh, the only other the other thing I'll say is I'm at Dave Chacho and Dave Chacho dot com and all the social media. There you go. And maybe you want, how do you spell Dave Chacho? Because I can't keep track of it. Uh, D-A-V-E-C-I-A-C-C-I-O. 
Perfect. And it's also going to be in the description of this podcast, which is probably on some kind of screen in front of you. Uh, Greg, where can everyone find you? You can find me on the tweets at Greg Goodness, and you can per- uh, find me performing occasionally when it's open at the Pack Theater in beautiful, sunny Hollywood, California. And I'm Zach Wilson. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at that Zach Wilson. Uh, thank you so much for checking out the podcast. You can follow the show itself at Shipping Pod on both Twitter and Instagram. Until next time, guys, this has been Ships in the Night, casting off. <laughs> <laughs>